Hi again then guys, and welcome to episode 17 of Quattroporte, the review series for the sports saloons and of course super saloons, old and new, that are featured on Gran Turismo 6. And in this episode we're featuring a very unique vehicle, not only as a car overall, but also more specifically as a saloon. This is the 1966 Renault R8 Gordini. This is a car which has a pretty rich history from what I can ascertain about the car. Kind of a cult following and was pretty successful in competitions. Now I haven't read up on the car and I'm not a fan of the car, but it obviously has a history to it. I'm not a huge fan of classic French cars in general. There are some that I like, but one of the things I do actually like about them, the ones that I do like that is, is that they dare to be different. They don't just follow norms for the sake of it. Now that doesn't always result in the best cars, but sometimes it does. It results in something special. And this car is that, to a degree. Because its raw spec doesn't initially sound that impressive, but what you can work from with that spec is very impressive. This car is rear-engine, and rear-wheel drive, which is very unique on Gran Turismo, specifically because not only is it one of the very few rear-engine, rear-drive cars on the game, but you can narrow that down even more by its being a saloon. There are hardly any rear-engine, rear-drive saloons, only three or four. That makes it pretty unique. But then of those, this is pretty much the only classic one. So it's a truly niched car on Gran Turismo. Now, in real life, there are other cars like this, but on the game, not at the moment. And it does have its downsides. The rear engine, rear drive chassis does make it unique, let's say, in its handling. And it takes a little bit of learning to learn how the car will react coming out of certain corners at different speeds, what it's capable of. And also, it's reasonably expensive for what it can do. It's a 50 grand car. Now, in the broad scheme of Gran Turismo, that's not that much money. But for a car which, in terms of actual performance, is no better than a, a Clio Sport, that is quite a lot of money. But, this car isn't really a car that you buy because of what it can do. You buy it because of its historical significance, and that is, of course, reflected in the price, as it as it is with many of the classics that are on the game. Now the engine is a 1.3 litre, it's turbocharged when fully tuned, and it puts out a pretty decent 313 horsepower and 218 foot-pounds of torque. Now that on its own is pretty impressive for a 1.3 litre engine, but combine that with the fact that it only weighs 763 kilos with the full weight loss package, and you've got yourself a potential little monster around the track. Now despite not having a massive amount of power, that ultra low weight means that the power to weight ratio per tonne is a very impressive 410, which is higher, to put it into perspective, than that of a Tesla Model S. Pretty impressive then for a small classic car. Now as I said, the handling is pretty unique, and at its fully tuned 515 pp level, I wouldn't really recommend racing it at that level. Because although it's certainly not slow, it's just not really competitive enough in this day and age. If you're only using it against cars of its type from its time, then yeah, of course it would be. But not now. You can just get so many good cars at that kind of level with better specs than that. So this isn't a car that I would recommend buying if you're looking to win every race you enter. This is the kind of car for people who are a fan of classics specifically, or of cars with rich heritage, or just collectors. But the funny thing about this car is it's one of the very few cars on the game that is a pretty unique collector's car, but still is often overlooked. You don't see very many people at all driving this car. And the handling, although tricky initially to set up, actually has some pretty distinct advantages, such as on twisty tracks. So overall, yeah, 50 grand for what it can do is quite a lot. But 50 grand for a car of its type, 
and of its uniqueness, I would say is a pretty good deal. As far as straight line performance, well, it's not slow, but I don't think you'd be surprised to hear me say it's not going to set any records anytime soon. But overall, it's an interesting alternative to the more mainstream options. The handling has its advantages, especially for twisty corners, and if nothing else, it's a completely unique collector's piece to own. So, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.